table in this video let us look at this topic achalasia of the esophagus look at this uh, pronunciation achalasia of the esophagus you can also call it as esophageal achalasia okay esophageal achalasia now uh, i think earlier they used to call it as achalasia cardia because this part of stomach is called as cardia right but as it is a condition of the esophagus we are calling it as esophageal achalasia achalasia of the esophagus okay so what exactly is happening here the lower part of esophagus uh, the sphincter here you can see this one the sphincter here is very tight okay it doesn't relax so what happens is the food you eat will get accumulated here the food will get accumulated here okay and this will cause dilatation of the esophagus stasis of food and infection right so you understand the person is not able to send the food into the stomach from the esophagus so he will have difficulty in swallowing so here you can see it is written it is a esophageal motility disorder what is it there is a problem with the motility of the esophagus it is one of the esophageal motility disorders <coughs> so again here they have shown this is normal where you can see that the sphincter is uh, not so tight and here you can see that the sphincter is so tight right so this is esophageal achalasia <coughs> and you can see the esophagus is also dilated here if you see compared with the normal uh, esophagus this is dilated right so this is esophageal achalasia so it comes under esophageal motility disorders one of the uh, uh, conditions one of the causes so basically this is a neuromuscular problem neuromuscular that is nerve and muscle problem which is causing this um condition esophageal achalasia is because of what neuromuscular disorder right next so what will happen the uh, lower esophageal sphincter is hypertonic it will fail to relax okay so uh, normally how the esophagus will send the food down uh, it how will the food move down the esophagus because of this peristalsis this propagation of this contraction of the esophagus happens and the food is sent down the esophagus but this peristaltic uh, peristalsis movement will be will be affected in this condition so there is a failure of the propagation of the esophageal contraction okay so all these words you have to write in the exam you can even draw this diagram so what will happen the food will become uh, there will be status stasis of food in this place and this food can also get infected because of this stasis right and the esophagus phagus will become enlarged this also we told you so these terms you will write so <clears throat> these people because of this uh, peristaltic movement of the esophagus being affected these people will have difficulty in swallowing okay next this term is of difficulty in swallowing is called what dysphagia so all these terms should come out in your uh, paper now what exactly is happening why is it failing to relax because there is defective release of nitric oxide by these neurons which are there in the lower esophageal sphincter okay so the inhibitory neurons in the lower esophageal sphincters are re defectively releasing nitric oxide hence there is no relaxation of these muscles so there is this sphincter which is very tight okay the cause when you come to cause it is unknown they are saying it can be associated with autoimmune diseases so basically the word you will write in the exam is autoimmune disease like type 1 diabetes mellitus systemic lupus erythematosus rheumatoid arthritis jogren syndrome so what will you write for achalasia cardia uh, uh, esophageal achalasia the cause you will write unknown cause autoimmune diseases all the diseases you will list under uh, autoimmune diseases okay now let's move on so you've seen the causes the we are continuing with the cause it can also be because of the infection of this uh, uh, if you are infected probably with parasite uh, trypo, uh, trypanosoma cruzi okay this is a uh, american trypanosomiasis they call uh, this parasite how will it enter your body via this uh, vector that is a uh, bug if this bug bites you and if the bug was infected with the trypanosoma cruzi parasite and then this parasite will enter your blood stream here you can see 
and uh, they're showing this in the bloodstream. So this will cause a disease called Chagas disease. Chagas disease, remember. And uh, here what will happen, you will have uh, uh, a condition which is very similar to achalasia. You will have achalasia. So you understand this can clinically, this will be indistinguishable. So one of the causes we can write in the exam as trypano, American trypanosomiasis, parasitic infection, which will lead to esophageal motility disorder. Guys, are you focusing? Okay. What is the other cause? Still we are in causes only. Carcinoma of the cardia. Cardia is what? Cardia is the part of the stomach, right, where uh, it, the esophagus is joining. You remember that? So, if there is carcinoma of the cardia, also this type of difficulty in swallowing, the is lower esophageal sphincter problems will happen. This is actually not a condition of the esophagus. It is a condition of because of the stomach. So, here they are calling this, if this cardia, now this cardia has cancer right carcinoma of the cardia part if there is cancer is cancer here then this will also cause same symptoms however this is not a condition because of the esophagus so this will cause what is called as a pseudo achalasia pseudo achalasia where will you see pseudo achalasia in the carcinoma of cardia so in causes you will write all this right summarize the causes of uh, achalasia cardia causes of achalasia cardia first one what did we say First one we said was autoimmune disorders, right? Then we said that it could be infection with trypanosomia cruzi, right? Parasite. Then carcinoma of cardia, which will actually cause something called as a pseudo achalasia. Then finally, always you will write unknown cause, which should be idiopathic, right? I would like to write unknown and all in the end. So our list looks long also. You can write it in the first also, like this textbook has written in the first, um, that's up to you. Okay, autoimmune, don't forget. Uh, infection also, don't forget. Carcinoma of cardia. Okay, now let's move on. Clinical features of achalasia, achalasia, uh, esophag esophageal achalasia, let's say. Clinical features. Now, what did you know? You already know this. Dysphagia. You already know this, right? Dysphagia. Regurgitation of this food can occur, right? You understand. He's not able to swallow, so there can be regurgitation of food. Now, the, he can have chest pain because of all this pressure and the esophageal spasm in the uh, chest, right? And the thorax, so he can have chest pain. He'll have weight loss. Why will he have weight loss? Yes, because he's not able to eat well. Correct. Very good you are. Smart. Then, when he sleeps, what will happen? This food, which is getting regurgitated, can it enter the lungs? Then that will cause pulmonary aspiration. So they are calling it as nocturnal pulmonary aspiration, hoping that this guy is always sleeping in the night. But what happens if he is sleeping in during daytime? Then we will have to call it something else, I think. Then this um, clinical features, there in the last they are adding this point, that is uh, carcinoma of the esophagus can develop. Squamous carcinoma of the esophagus can develop. So what is happening? This esophagus has suffered so much that Finally, this can become a carcinoma of the esophagus. Understood now? Clinical features done. Now let's move on. Investigations, what we will order for this guy? Uh, you can do endoscopy, right? You put one scope into his mouth and check if he has, you will have to go till the stomach and check if he has carcinoma of the cardia. Okay, that we will do. So we will rule out the pseudo achalasia. Um, okay, then barium swallow x-ray. Barium swallow is nothing but x-ray only, right? So what will happen there? You will see that this tapering. We will show you photo. Look at this photo here. So this photo. so barium swallow. Here you can see how the esophagus is dilated here, and here it has tapered. So I'm not sure this is bird beak appearance, right? So this is barium swallow x-ray. Okay. So what they are saying, LOS here is lower esophageal sphincter when you use uh, O as the starting letter for uh, uh, esophagus. Otherwise, we will write it as LES only, esophageal sphincter, lower esophageal sphincter. Okay. And this D is diaphragm, they are saying. Okay. Then to this uh, investigation. So first we saw endoscopy. Then we are seeing the barium swallow x-ray. Then you are talking about manometry. Manometry means pressure, pressure measurement. No? So look at the normal manometer, the manometry of the esophagus. First you look at normal. Okay. Then I will show you the uh, one for uh, achalasia. 
of the esophagus okay well, i'll zoom into that so here you look at this how the uh, pressure is in the esophagus right can you see this is all pressure they are, they are showing peristaltic movement so one in achalasia esoph of the esophagus see where is the pressure there's absence of this peristaltic movement and the lower esophageal sphincter the pressure is high you understood no people this is manometry of the esophagus with investigations people we'll move on after investigations yes treatment so how will you manage treat are you ready people to look at the treatment so first we will look at the endoscopic methods now under endoscopic you have three one is uh, using a balloon you do forceful pneumatic dilatation of the lower esophageal sphincter so the words here are forceful pneumatic dilatation pneumatic means air so balloon so forceful pneumatic dilatation of the lower esophageal sphincter with a balloon so you put in uh, endoscope and you send the balloon and then use the balloon and dilate the lower esophageal sphincter this will help most of the patients uh, some people you may need another sitting uh, also another dil dilatation they are saying you may need uh, but if if it requires more and more uh, uh, more and more frequent dilatation that means to say you have to use other methods okay then uh, the other one they are telling is uh, in old people you can try the injection of botulinum toxin don't get scared with the word toxin botulinum toxin uh, is uh, going to relax the muscle right so that's why they are trying it why only in old people because it can uh, cause relapse and it can cause worsening also sometimes okay then coming to the third one here in endoscopic uh, methods of fixing what achalasia of the esophagus yes per oral endoscopic myotomy poem where do you do poem poem sing a poem esophagus will sing what will it sing yes i'm trying to tell you that poem comes where in which topic in achalasia of the esophagus so per oral endoscopic myotomy means you are cutting the muscle a hole in the muscle sounds more like right uh, per oral endoscopic myotomy you are cutting the muscle uh, so uh, per oral means you are going by the mouth endoscopy again uh, and you are cutting the muscle at the lower esophageal sphincter so we will tell you the procedure so this is endoscope it is gone in it is going to cut the uh, mucosa and then it is going to go second step is here down here so here it is creating a tunnel in the submucosa this is the second step so what was the first step you open the mucosa mucosa you open then in submucosa you make a tunnel then third step third step is what you are going to do the circular muscle uh, uh, cutting so myotomy so myotomy has happening here and lastly wherever you made the entry that place you are putting a clip you can see the clip here so clip you are putting and uh, that is the fourth step okay poem poem p o e m okay uh, per oral endoscopic myotomy okay that is the endoscopic methods we have finished the endoscopic methods of treatment of achalasia of the esophagus okay now let us move on endoscopic done what comes next surgical surgical there is one operation you should know heller's operation heller's myotomy basically this they don't do that much uh, it is very invasive however what exactly is happening here instead of going endoscopically they are going laparoscopically or as an open operation in the abdomen they are opening up the abdomen and all that right so it is quite a, um, a major uh, thing now um, what exactly they are doing here i'll show you the image see they are going in to into the abdomen so here you can see the ports that they have put in the abdomen and then the same place they are trying to access the lower esophageal sphincter and doing the myotomy the only thing here is because they have anyways uh, entered the uh, abdomen right so, uh, so what they will do they will also do a fundoplication that is fundus of the stomach they are plicating why are they doing this because they don't want the acid to uh, uh, enter the uh, esophagus so did you understand this is called as gastro esophageal reflux so this they don't want they don't want the acid to enter the esophagus so they are doing a fundoplication understand that uh, people uh, in any uh, of this um, 
treatment, whether it is endoscopic or surgical, making the lower esophageal, um, if you are making the lower esophageal sphincter uh, loose, you understand what I am saying? It is tight, so I am saying the word loose. So, here is a lower esophageal sphincter. Now, this one you have loosened, right? So, now what will happen? There is a chance of acid reflux, right? So, in these people who have been treated, they will give PPIs, that is proton pump inhibitors, so that they will produce less acid. Did you understand? In any type of treatment, endoscopic or surgical, because there can be reflux they are doing, they are going to give them PPI um, to stop the acid production. Okay, you understood, right? PPI therapy is often necessary after surgery. <clears throat> Though they have done the partial fundoplication also, they are talking about PPI therapy. Okay, because at least in the uh, fundoplication, it's supposed to help a little, right? Because it is an anti-reflux procedure. But still, they are telling you need to give PPI. In endoscopic, you are just going endoscopically, so you have not done any fundoplication. So, definitely, you will again need to give PPIs. You understood, no, people, what concept we are trying to tell you? Yeah, so this uh, Heller myotomy, I think, is like a very... Um, what I'm saying is a very uh, extreme uh, situation. I feel they do this so much of uh, surgery that to laparoscopically or open abdomen. Understood by people, uh, all the uh, solutions to this akha, lacia of the esophagus. So basically, you will uh, endoscopically go put a balloon, dilate this, or you will give some botulinum toxin injection uh, endoscopically in old age people, uh, or you can do a POEM, P O E M, or you can do a Heller myotomy. Understood, no? Bye-bye.